He was a hero to me. Living with Bruce Wayne is gonna change your life forever. I admired him at first. The police, they believe it may not have been an accident. But I had to walk away. I was becoming too much like him. Tigers have always been my favorite, ever since I was a kid. You have to be naked? Ah. <laughs> I still can't believe he traded in the Porsche for a minivan. I really like to meet Batman. No. My mom says there's no such thing as monsters. I think she's wrong. When I feel the darkness come out, it feels there's a power inside of me. Something I don't understand. Shall we begin? Sometimes, ah! it comes out. Total badass. Where did you say you were from again? I didn't. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. Happy Trailer Week. We got so much footage to break down. This obviously dealing with the Titans' origins and their relative powers. There's a new round of that giveaway for the DC streaming service. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. I'll do that in all my Titans Like DC streaming service videos, so no worries. Within the first couple of episodes, you actually do get Robin's backstory. He's the first big person that they explain. Then they do Raven, then they move through the other characters. You see him here at his parents' grave. This is just meant to mirror Batman visiting his parents' grave because their origin stories are similar. My parents were murdered. You get Bruce Wayne, you get Wayne Manor, Alfred. You get all that stuff with him as a kid in his first couple of days at the Wayne Mansion. When he's sitting here with the police and they're like, we believe that it might not have been an accident that have killed your parents. He sees this letter from Bruce Wayne. Somebody wants to adopt you. And because his parents have just died, he could care less who Bruce Wayne is. Like, all he knows is that his family is gone. But what they do through the first couple of episodes is sort of give you a little bit more of his time with Batman. So like first you get this with the letter, he wants to adopt you after the accident. Then you move through the slow progression of him being a bit of a rebel, then Bruce finally telling him, there's another way. Let me teach you how to channel your anger. Jeff Johns has already said that they have a lot of really awesome scenes in the Batcave. I imagine that's both flashbacks and maybe in present day too, because they keep referring to Batman in present day through the series too. But every time you hear Robin talk about him, he refers to him as Bruce, like within his cell phone, like he's scanning through phone numbers. He has Alfred. His name is in there as Bruce. So if he wanted to call Batman, he would be calling Bruce Wayne technically. I've already done a video about that Jason Todd trailer, so I'll link that at the end of this, but obviously that comes much later in the series. Remember, it's 12 episodes, so a lot of this backstory stuff you get within the first couple, but then once you do Robin's origin, then you sort of deal with the new Robin, and I wouldn't be surprised in a future season, obviously we've been talking about Red Hood, if we also do the Tim Drake Robin, but that might take a little bit longer, because first you have to introduce the idea of Jason Todd, then you have to kill him off, you have to do Death in the Family, then after a hot minute, you could do Tim Drake, then a little while after that, you can do Red Hood. Be because they're doing two Robins already, pretty safe bet that they could do the third Robin as well. But probably one of the other bigger things about this is that you get to see Beast Boy transform into a lion. Now, he does that a couple times in the series, like this clip of him inside this Best Buy looking store here. That's from the first episode. It's just a reference to Beast Boy's first appearance in the comics in Doom Patrol number 99. So they come back to their lair and they find that it's been trashed and they learn that it's Beast Boy. He transforms into a bunch of different animals. Like when he says he's always transformed into tigers because that's his favorite animal, that's just a reference to his first appearance. You see him take down the criminal while he's in tiger form, so this is kind of what he's going to look like. It's a little more polished in the actual series, but then you see the corresponding shot with everybody else activating their powers, like Raven is in full-on dark mode. Nice joke about him being really pissed off about the minivan. Early in the season, Robin is driving one of Bruce Wayne's classic air-cooled Porsches. So if you're a really big fan of Porsches, he drives a really badass one for the first part of the series. But once they all come together, obviously they need to travel together. So that's probably where the minivan comes in. He does sort of lighten the mood just a little bit because Robin is pretty serious when the series picks up. 
Starfire is also kind of hardcore, and Raven, obviously you know all about Raven's personality. So Beast Boy is there to balance the tone just a little bit. I would totally love to meet Batman. That's actually from a different scene. It's like the Batman F-bomb that Robin dropped in that first big trailer. So they kind of did the same thing with this. The actual scene is a little bit different with the way that dialogue plays out. Speaking of Batman though, I know there's been rumors about his supposed costume. I haven't seen every single episode of Titans yet, so I can't tell you definitively, and I don't think I'd even be allowed to, whether or not Batman actually shows up in a Bat costume, but it kind of seems like he does. But the whole thing is, is that you get a little bit more Bruce Wayne in every single episode. So like you just see him in the background in shots in the early episodes, then you get a much bigger frontal shot of him. So it just seems like we get more and more Bruce Wayne Batman as we get get to the end of the season. The part of the clip that shows you Raven's powers also doesn't quite do it full justice. She can actually enter people's mouths in smoke monster mode, so she can actually do quite a bit more than this. But she still doesn't totally understand her powers, and they're going to get more and more powerful towards the end of the season. Season 1 is largely dedicated to Robin and Raven's arcs, so Raven's slowly learning about her powers, growing more powerful, and Robin slowly becoming Nightwing. But if you've ever seen any of the cartoons, read any of the comics, you kind of know what's going on with her character. She's slowly learning who her father is, Trigon, what happened to her real mother who was taken by the Church of Blood, and how he wants to use her as a vessel to enter our universe. But he needs to be invited by her. So every time Raven gives herself over to the darkness within her, she sort of puts herself at risk for letting her father into this world. So the whole idea with her is that she needs to learn to control the darkness, not necessarily ignore it. Like she can't ignore who she is. The whole deal with Starfire is that she doesn't exactly know who she is because of some amnesiac event that happened. We don't know a lot about that when the series begins, so I'm assuming that they'll explain it in the later episodes. But the whole idea is that she's supposed to be one of the most OP members of the team, but because she doesn't remember who she is, she doesn't know how to use her powers. So even though she can fly, she can shoot energy beams, most of the time when you see her using her powers, she's just roasting people alive and blasting holes in walls like this. This bunker here where they're in is actually her old lair. Like she finds this and she's like, why was I searching for something? What was I searching for? So she's also been on the hunt for Raven separately from what Robin finds out. So they all sort of come to this mystery about where Raven comes from in this whole prophecy from the Church of Blood and Trigon in separate ways. And it's their desire to take care of Raven, who's like this helpless seeming little girl, even though she's not that helpless. This sort of inspires them to become a team. Like they're not super hot on each other when they first meet, but they all care about what happens to Raven. So they're like, OK, we'll figure this out. And then eventually they grow closer towards the end of the season, I imagine. And as far as costume changes go, yes, there is a rumor that they all get their new costumes in the final episode, but I haven't seen it yet, so that's still a rumor. I'm allowed to post my non-spoilery review of the premiere next week. That'll post on Wednesday, so look out for that. I'll remind people when we get a little bit closer. The actual episodes will be available to watch on the DC streaming service starting every Friday on the 12th, and it'll be a weekly show, just like the other DC TV shows. So what'll happen is, is there was a whole bunch of other footage that dropped. I'll do a Daredevil Season 3 trailer next. That should be up in the next couple of hours. And I'll name a giveaway winner for this when I post new DC. We just learned a whole bunch of stuff about the Flash Arrow three-way crossover. They're doing Elseworlds. We have the Monitor confirming Crisis on Infinite Earths in a future season crossover. Click here for that Jason Todd trailer and click here for that brand new Venom trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. We'll see you guys tonight.